What's up everyone, my name is Zach and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing my 2024 mid-year freakout tag. So since I started BookTube a few years ago, this is a tag that I've done every year. I really enjoy doing it. I think it's really fun to look at how the year's been and talk about my hopes for the rest of the year. So I'm very, very excited to be bringing you guys this video. If you haven't already, subscribing to my channel helps me out a ton. A like on the video goes a long way and I would really love to know, like answer any of these questions that you want in the comments because I would love to know how your year's going, what you want to do different the rest of the year, like what your hopes are, anticipated releases, like all the things. I want to know about your reading year as well, as I'm about to share mine with you all. Um, yeah, so my energy might be a little bit low right now. Um, yesterday, my best friend, Neve, who most of you know and knew was coming for three weeks, um, I took her back to New York and... Um, yeah, she left. It was, it's very sad because we are best friends and we really enjoyed our three weeks together. And I drove from Virginia to New York and back yesterday without stopping. I mean, I stopped a few times to go to the bathroom, but otherwise I just drove straight. So I drove a lot yesterday, so I'm very tired, but I really wanted to film a video because it's been a few weeks since I've done that. And I really wanted to tell you guys about my mid-year freakout tag. And then also I kind of wanted to dedicate this video to Neve because she's such a wonderful human and such a big, part of my life and um yeah i really miss her and we had such a wonderful time if you follow me on social media my only social media that i have really is instagram there are some pictures of us and i've been talking about her coming in so many videos so if you guys are, are interested we had such an amazing time it was wonderful thank you neve thank you for being my best friend um and being so good to me and my family you're an incredible human and i can't wait to see you again next fall okay so that I don't cry, let's keep moving into my mid-year freakout tag. Okay, so I got these questions offline. This is a tag that everyone does every year. None of these questions are original to me. And there are a few that I just am not gonna answer because they're ones that just don't really apply to me, like fictional crush, things like that. Really, I'm gonna talk about my favorite books of the year, least favorite books of the year, things like that. So the first question on the mid-year freakout tag is best book you've read this year. And I have a few, I couldn't just pick one. So I have a few that I'm gonna share with you guys. Um, some of them I don't have physical copies of yet because they either haven't come out yet and I've read them early or um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the only reason I wouldn't have them yet. Um, so one of them is one that I just did a review on. So if you wanna know more thoughts about this book, you can check out my review for that. And that's for Midnight Feast. It's a spoiler-free review. I loved this book. Midnight Feast is Lucy Foley's new thriller. It is amazing. Like I go into detail about why I love that book so much in that video, but it the, the scene for it is amazing. It's basically, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what these books are about or we'll be here all day, but it is her newest thriller. It takes place on an island. It goes back and forth in time. It's very smart. Like, like you have to pay attention and pick up on things. She doesn't spell it all out for you. And that was something that I really, really loved about it. And then also there's a lot of paganism and just like witchy forest vibes. Also like so many different characters. I felt like it was written so well. I just, I really, really loved that book. So definitely had to be on this list. And then another book I actually own a copy of, but it's somewhere downstairs. That, that's the other thing that I meant to say at the beginning of this video. My background is not going to look, I mean, I want it to continue to improve the way that it looks because most of you know, I just renovated part of our house and I moved my filming area upstairs and it's like a work in progress. Well, I found out recently that we're going to be moving. Um, and so, well, not found out. My family together is deciding that we are going to be moving. And so... I wish you guys could see what was around me right now. Everything is in disarray and we'll probably be moving sometime in the next few months. And so I, I just don't care to like really put everything together right now. I have so many other things that I need to worry about for this move and family stuff, et cetera. And so it just is going to look this way. And then when we get in the new house, I'll have like a library and I can't wait to be able to film in that. Um, but yeah, this doesn't really look the way that I want it to, but it's going to be good enough for now. And I don't remember why I got off on this tangent now. Oh, one of my books that I wanted to show you guys, I actually do have a physical copy of, but I can't find it right now because things are just everywhere. I think it might be downstairs. Wait, is that it right there? No, that's not it. Okay, anyway, it's called Patricia Wants to Cuddle, and it is a random horror book that um, I found on, I had heard of it, but I'd never like seriously wanted to read it. 
And I did. I listened to it while I was working at my landscaping job, the the side job that we do on the weekends. And it is so good. If if you're looking for queer books to read right now, because I know June, some people like to read queer books. Partition Wants to Cuddle is a really good queer horror. It's funny. It's witty. It's smart. Samantha Allen, the author, has risen to like one of my new favorite authors. She has another book coming out later this year that I really can't wait for. So all that to say, go into it knowing nothing. Just just especially if you like reality TV commentary. Um, there's just so much in that book and it really took me by surprise because going into it, I thought, oh, I'll just listen to this while I work. It can't be that good. And I actually ended up really, really loving it. So yeah, I would recommend that. Okay. I need to, to speed up or we're going to be here all day. Um, and then most of you know from other videos that I've done that I really loved S.T. Gibson's new book, An Education in Malice, which most people did not love, but I did. It's a sapphic vampire story. It's full of dark academia vibes, good characters. I loved the writing. I think too many people compare this to A Dowry of Blood and then they feel let down by it, but this is a whole different book. And I, I read A Dowry of Blood and I loved it. I actually like this book more, um, which I think is one of the most unpopular opinions on the internet, but whatever. And then another new release that I really, really loved that I also did a video on was Ruth Ware's One Perfect Couple. I talked more in that video about why I loved this book so much, but it's another island mystery by another author that I love. Lucy Foley, Ruth Ware both put out like island stories this year and island stories, the and then there were none trope, etc. is not one that I ever get tired of. And I know a lot of people are talking about how they're tired of that trope in thrillers, but for some reason, it just really does it for me. And both Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley knocked, knocked it out of the park in my opinion so yeah those are my favorite books of the year so far i'm doing this new thing where i mark books as like new favorites so that at the end of the year i can look back and see all of my favorite books and things like that so i can't wait for the end of the year when i like break all these down for you guys and like try to figure out what my like top favorites are it's gonna be so hard it's gonna be so hard but yeah so those are some books that i've loved so far this year the next question is best sequel you've read this year and i have two because i can't pick one book for any of these freaking questions but i actually loved the sequel to everyone in my family has killed someone which is everyone on this train is a suspect i actually thought it was better than the first one this book is basically a love letter to the golden age of crime. I'm a big Agatha Christie fan, so I really, really loved this book. Um, if you liked Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, I think that you will enjoy this. On that note, if you didn't like Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, please give this a try because I think some of the things that maybe got muddled or felt too much in the first book are really smoothed out in this one. And it's it's shorter. It's just, it's a really fun time. And I, I really, really enjoyed it. And then also... Um, the Man Who Died Twice, the second book in the Thursday Murder Club series. I actually did not love the first book in the Thursday Murder Club series, but I loved this one. I thought it was really, really good. Um, and then the one after this, I did not like very much. This series is very hit or miss for me. I've yet to read the last one, but first one was okay. This one I loved. And then the third one I didn't like, like at all really, but I really, really loved this. I would totally reread this. So yeah. Those are my favorite sequels that I've read so far this year. And then the next question is new release that you haven't read, but you want to. So I have so many new releases right now at my disposal, and I'm so grateful for that. I have so many videos planned because I've really shaped my channel into being like new release reviews. I'm going to do other one off videos like this one and TBRs and some reading vlogs and what the bleep did I read. But I really, really have a passion for reviewing new releases, getting those opinions out to you guys early. Like it really I really, really love doing that. So I have so many and I cannot do this question justice. But one that I bought recently was um, The Wren in the Library. So this is not one that I had early access to. It's just, I had this on my list to buy since December of 2023. So I have been really looking forward to this book and it's absolutely beautiful. This is just the regular like Barnes and Noble edition book. Like this book is stunning, I think. When I get to my new library, I will probably display it like this because look at that. Like that is just absolutely beautiful. Really all I know about this book is that when I read the synopsis of it, um, it reminded me of Strange the Dreamer and I love that book. And so basically this book gives me Strange the Dreamer vibes. And there's a little quote on here that says, can you love the dark when, when you know what it hides? 
I think it's a romanticy, which honestly, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of growing on me these days. I know some of you just really cringed, but it's true. Some romanticy when done really well is, is really growing on me these days. So that is one of many. And then with that question too, it says most anticipated second half the year releases. I have so many, like I, I need to do a whole video on that because I have so many books like thinking about it is a little bit overwhelming because there are so many that I want to read and review for you guys. I have so many planned out in my notion. I'm just so excited for the rest of 2024 and all the books coming out. I know that that's not the answer that this question is asking, but I want you guys to know that I have so many books that are coming out that I'm excited to review for you guys. And I'm dedicated to doing that. And I hope that you find the benefits and getting early opinions and getting to know me and my opinions help, hopefully helps you decide if you want to read a, the book or not, regardless of if I liked it or not, you know what to expect from me. And so, yeah, that's just, that's where I'm at. Like, I love doing that. So I, it would take too long. Like I, we'd be here all day because there are just so like, there's over a hundred, there are so many. So my answer to that is stay tuned and um, read with me the rest of 2024. Okay, biggest disappointments. I don't have any of these books, but I'll just quickly talk about them. One of them, in them is If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finlay. So Alex Finlay, I, I love his book. Um, oh, what is it called? I cannot remember, like, let me pull it up. Alex Finlay, but this is what happens when you read so many books, can't remember the name. Um, it is called The Night Shift. I loved that book. Um, and when, when, if something happens to me came out, I thought for sure I would love that book. I don't know if it was the wrong time. I don't know if I had too many other things going on, but um, I did a whole video on it as well. With It was mixed in with a few other books that I reviewed in that video, but I just did not enjoy the writing in it. I didn't enjoy the plot. I didn't enjoy where it was going. I felt bamboozled by what it was supposed to be about. I just, it wasn't for me and I DNF'd it, which is really depressing. Speaking of Cups of Depressos, um, I DNF'd Bride and Not in Love by Ali Hazelwood, both of which have full videos where I describe in depth why I DNF those books. I'm not going to do that here because I took my time to like really explain that for you guys. It's just unfortunate that at this point in the year, I realized that I don't love Allie Hazelwood's writing anymore. I really, really loved her early works when they were more plot and less smut. Now they're more smut and less plot, except for Check In Mate. That was her YA release this past year. I loved that book. Loved, loved, loved Check In Mate. But I have not enjoyed her other adult books. So unfortunately, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. But moving on to more happier things. Biggest surprises. I have two of them. One of them is Kill For Me, Kill For You, which is a new thriller. Um, this book is just a really good time. It also has some horror elements. It's written really well. It has different perspectives, different characters, different timelines. It's just, I, I loved this book a lot and I didn't expect to because I thought, oh, it's just another thriller from Book of the Month. It can't be that good. I just picked it up on a whim and I actually really, really loved this book. So if you've been thinking about reading Kill For Me, Kill For you this is your sign give it a try i really really did enjoy it i thought the plot twist was interesting i thought the characters were well developed i thought there were some horror elements that i really enjoyed it just every time i put it down i wanted to pick it back up so i really enjoyed that a lot and then also my heart is a chainsaw is like a literary horror that i've wanted to read for a long time which has a lot of mixed reviews letter to slashers and as I've gotten older, I've really, really fallen in love with slashers and horror and the, the genre in general. The writing in this is so smart. The main character in this book is one of my favorites of the year, if not my favorite main character of the year. I just really, really enjoyed this book and I want to read the sequels, which I've heard some mixed opinions about, which made me really nervous, but I loved the setting. I loved the writing. I thought this book was so smart and so fun and just amazing. And I already want to reread it. Also, the audio of this is really good if you've been wanting to read it, but weren't sure if you would like it, but you listen to audio, then maybe give the audio a try because I, I really, really enjoyed the audio. Um, a new favorite author, honestly, is S.T. Gibson. I really liked Dowry Blood. I really loved An Education and Malice. And then also I went to one of her virtual author events and she's just so sweet and so kind. She does a lot for the queer community and, the, and like as a trans person, I really appreciate her trans representation, which can be really hard to find. So S.T. Gibson, definitely one of my new favorite authors. And also, and also Ruth Ware is another one that I've discovered that her thrillers are exactly what I want them to be. So yeah, I would say S.T. Gibson and Ruth Ware, though I'm continuing to discover more and more authors that I really love. Okay, 
My favorite video is probably the video where I reviewed the Fury. And that's because I realized that I can do what I want on BookTube and you guys enjoy the content. Um, and I say that to say that being a BookTuber, there can be, and you guys hear this, I'm sure from other BookTubers, so much pressure to do what's popular, rather that's reading vlogs, X, Y, and Z. And I've given up that and I'm deciding to do the content that makes me happy. And I'm very proud of that. And I'm really fortunate that this video like took off for me. It, it got a lot of views and it really was the catalyst to me doing more of what I wanted to do with my channel and not looking back regardless of views. I'm doing what I love to do and that's being passionate about reviews and just talking about books with you guys and just relaxing. And thank you guys so much for watching my reviews, for commenting and engaging with me and joining the Discord and just being a part of the community. I, I'm very, very grateful for you all. Thank you so much. And this video was the catalyst to that. So that has to be my favorite. And then last or not least, but not least, um, the most beautiful book that I have gotten this year. And this was actually sent to me by Angry Robot and it's Evocation by S.T. Gibson. This book is beautiful and they sent it to me like as a gift. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, so they, there's also some like goodies in here that were sent to me, but not only is the actual cover beautiful, but look at this. Like this is stunning. And when Neve was here, we did a little photo shoot, a little ghost face photo shoot, which I'll share more pictures of that probably during spooky season. I mean, I'm gonna share pictures of it throughout cause it was really, really fun to do. And I can't get it out right now cause I'm feeling lazy, but there is a red ribbon in here as well. But I just am obsessed with this cover. I think it's absolutely stunning. Yeah. I would say all in all, my reading this year has been the best that it's ever been. I wouldn't say, I think it's because I've gotten more comfortable in my reading. I'm learning more about myself. I'm reaching out of my comfort zone. I'm turning my channel into what I want it to be. And I just feel really grateful for BookTube and I continue to love what I do on here. So thank you guys again so much for tuning into my channel. Um, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. It might shift and change. Um, I still want to do some reading vlogs. I just have to figure out exactly how I want that to look for me. You know, I'm gonna be moving. We have a lot of family stuff going on right now. Um, yeah, some things, some big things are changing, but all in all, I'm feeling very grateful this year. The last year has been very, very tough on me and my family, but also I've had some of the most beautiful moments ever um, this year. And so I'm just really, I'm feeling really grateful. Um, so yeah, thank you guys to you all. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let me know your mid-year freakout tag answers and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much. Bye.